Okay, so I have here a Hydro Flask, and if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I've had this for probably a month or so. Um, I'm the worst sister ever. I bought it for my brother to give to customize and give to him for his birthday, and yeah, his birthday's gone and passed like a month ago. So I'm the worst, but I'm still going to customize this for him, and I figured maybe you'd like to see me do it. So also I'm very clumsy. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but I dropped it. And I put a nice let me see, let me see. Yeah. I put a nice dent in it. See that? Yeah. So I am the worst. But I'm hoping that if I paint it with enough, you know, craziness or, you know, pattern that maybe you won't be able to notice it. So, right. First off, I'm going to take off the, this, what is this? Ooh, this paper that's stuck on. Ah. Right. Oh, I forgot to mention this is a 64 ounce flask, so it's uh, it's the big boy. He's a uh, he's a big boy. But I figure he could use it while he's sitting at his computer, gaming for many, many, many hours at a time. Now, my problem is I don't actually know what I'm gonna paint on. But what I do know is that when you're painting on unknown surfaces, it usually helps to use gesso. So that's what I'm actually going to do first, is I'm going to paint this whole thing with gesso. It's got kind of a texture to it, so I think that I don't need to sand it. I think I'm just going to paint on the gesso, and that should be enough. So yeah, let's go do that while I try and figure out what I'm going to put on it. So I threw on two coats of clear gesso because I didn't want to have to be careful and avoid the letters and logo for the Hydro Flask, and if I'd used white gesso, I definitely would have had to, and since the flask is already white, you know, sort of redundant. I decided that I paid a stupid amount for the logo, so might as well keep it visible. <laughs> and once I was done priming, I realized that there really was only one thing to do. And if you read the title of this video, then you already know what I'm going to paint. Yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho, classic 90s anime. The series is special to my brother and I. We were both like stupidly obsessed with it. So it's often a fallback for me when I want to give him some art, this or Dragon Ball Z, or to a lesser extent Naruto. But anyway, yeah, so this is what we're going with today. I sketched the design out off camera because you really couldn't see it very well while I was drawing it anyway, I checked. And it took a while to figure out exactly what I was going for and how I was going to position everybody, what they were going to be doing. I used a 2H drawing pencil because I know from watching other Hydro Flask customizing videos that pencil does smudge pretty badly on these, so I figured maybe a harder lead would be less likely to smudge. And it still did smudge quite a bit, but not anywhere near as badly as I'm sure it could have. Anyway, I decided to go with the whole crew hanging out at the beach. Because you know, Hydro, water, beach. Listen, there was a thought process here is all I'm saying, okay? I didn't say it was a complex one. Anyway, once I had my sketch done, which took forever. Also, word to the wise, don't bother trying to erase the pencil if you make a mistake. Just draw over it, because it just does not want to erase off of this surface. 
And I'm not sure if that's the fault of the gesso or the flask itself, but either way... Anyway, once I was done sketching, I started painting. So first we have Yusuke with a volleyball, probably ready to wreak some havoc, you know, as he does. And I just had to draw Pooh, his little spirit beast, lounging on an inner, inner tube with some sunglasses. Just super cute. And then we come to Kuwabara and Yukina in a boat, because of course he'd be trying to hang out with her and show off in front of her, and he apparently wasn't expecting to suddenly pull up this giant fish because he looks just as surprised as she is. Botan is also surprised. I gave her a pair of sunglasses because I didn't want Pooh to be the only one who was, you know, chilling like a villain. Though she can't really believe what she's seeing either, so she's just confirming without the dark tint, you know, by lifting him up a bit. After that is Keiko laughing at this whole scene, also on an inner tube, just like Pooh. She and Pooh seem to get along in the series. She's always carrying him around and such, so I figured he'd want to do the same thing she was doing, so that's why they're the only two that are both floating in inner tubes. And last, but definitely never the least, Kurama holding Hiei back. He's either going to murder someone for getting him anywhere near the water, or he's trying to murder Kuwabara specifically for being near his sister. Uh, either way, he's not excited about this whole situation. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention I'm using my Momart acrylic paint, which is the same paint I used when I painted my custom sketchbook cover in that video a couple months ago. And uh, it definitely required two thin coats of paint. I was trying not to make it look too thick and globby, since I don't really want this thing to have a texture when I'm done with it. So I laid down a really, really thin layer of paint first just to block in the shapes, and then added the second layer with more detail and shading and highlights and things like that. Sort of the way that I do digital art, actually, laying down a base color that's about the right shape and then filling in the shadows and highlights on top of it. Anyway, once all the characters are painted, and yes, Hiei does have the coolest swim trunks, I can't help it, he's my favorite character, so I think he's the coolest anyway, so he deserves the coolest clothes, don't judge me. It's time to move on to the background which was pretty tedious in its own way. The characters were tedious too, don't get me wrong, but the background was just kind of a whole different level. The water is a gradient from dark blue at the horizon to a sort of light bluish sea green in the foreground, and it was really difficult to keep that gradient uniform around the entirety of the Hydro Flask and not have it look like it was painted in sections, even though I had to paint it in sections, because in order to film, it had to be laying on its side the entire time, which meant that I had to paint one part, let it dry a little bit before I rolled it to the next part. It was a pain. If I had painted it standing straight up and down, that probably would have worked out better, but I couldn't figure out how to film it that way, so. Anyway, in the very closest parts of the foreground, I painted waves with an even lighter blue, and in some places a little bit darker for a shadow. And finally, the foam from the fish splashing out of the water, and the waves running into the boat, and the inner tubes were painted in white. After that, I filled in the sky with a blue gradient. Light blue at the horizon, going up into darker blue before I added one last little, uh, easter egg, if you will. Kuanma, of course, had to make an appearance, so that's where this little cloud comes in. I'm actually pretty proud of this Kuanma-shaped cloud. I really think I made it look like a cloud, and at the same time made it look like the shape of Kuanma as well, just hanging out, you know, waving hi to everyone. Of course, I had to add more clouds to the sky to make it look a little less conspicuous, now you sort of have to look for him to see him, and then go, Oh yeah, that's Koenma! Anyway, once that was all done and I allowed it to dry for a couple of hours, 
I opened these two Uni Posca pens I found amongst my things. I think they came from a monthly art box subscription of some kind. Probably Scrawler box? But I've never opened them before. They are 1M in size, and I have here a black and a white. Which I used to go in and give everything some line art definition, as well as some shines, since everyone is supposed to be in the water, so wet and shiny is appropriate. The black is a little bit thicker than I would have necessarily wanted it to be. It's the thinnest Posca pen that I have, so it's all I had to use. But I definitely would have preferred probably a 1MR, I believe those are smaller. But you know, work with what you have. Anyway, once that was all handled, this bad boy was finally done. Oh my gosh, this literally took forever. Over the course of three days, I probably spent like 18-ish hours on this, maybe even a little bit longer. It looks cool though. I really want to keep it, but I won't. I'm not that bad of a sister. I'm going to add a few layers of Liquitesse gloss varnish, as well as some dishwasher safe Mod Podge on top of that, just to make it extra bulletproof in case it needs to be washed or something. But I know from experience that if I can take pictures before I add a gloss top coat to something, it's always a better idea because there's way less of a glare. Anyway, it's pretty cool, don't you think? I certainly do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I always like to do group scenes when I do custom anime pictures. I always find them to be the most fun and interesting, even if it's pretty tedious. The idea of the characters just sort of casually hanging out, interacting with each other, is always cool to me, and trying to come up with ways for them to interact with each other, or how I think they would be acting around each other, is always really interesting too. This group in particular wasn't so bad because the characters are all on different planes, further away from and closer to the viewer. Like Yusuke is really big, but Kurama and Hiei are really small. So instead of standing next to each other where they would have to be all the same size, I could get away with drawing them at whatever size fit in the space. Having to make people in proportion to each other is probably the worst part about making a group picture. So here I made it so I didn't have to, because this thing was already going to be torture enough as it was. I didn't want to just, you know, kill myself over it. But anyway, uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you are watching before July 15th, 2020, don't forget to check out my huge Copic sketch giveaway, where you can win one of 12 prize packs, all of which include Copic sketch markers, a render, no bleed drawing pad, and lots more goodies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!